Missionary Baptist Church, 409 Holloman Drive in College Station, Texas. Amen. We welcome you to come and worship with us today on this very special occasion. Amen. Amen. Before we go any further, let me ask you if you would stand on your feet as, as our pastor and his, our first lady uh, come in and take their place. Amen. 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 Usher the Amen, as we celebrate on today the 42nd appreciation service for our pastor Dr. Emo Cooper and first lady sister Pearly Cooper amen amen our God is a good God amen and he's worthy of all of our praises amen and we're thankful to God that he has placed here in our midst amen someone who has been faithful steadfast amen resolute in his commitment amen to what God has given him to do so. We praise God for you, Pastor, and for yes, Sister sir. Cooper. Amen. 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 We're going we're gonna to honor the man of God today. Amen. That God has so wonderfully blessed us with. Amen. And while we're doing that, amen, we're all going to lift up the name of Jesus, yes, who our Bible tells us whose name is above all, all names. Yes, amen. Amen. The reason why we're able to even be here, amen, is because of his goodness and his grace. Amen. So we thank you for being here present in this place. Those that are, are, are tuning in with us via our live stream, bless you. Amen. The blessings of God be upon you. We, we, it, today is just another wonderful day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 I've come to realize that it doesn't matter if it's sunshine, if it's cloudy, if it's raining, if it's cold. I don't particularly like cold, but even if it's cold. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but my bones just hurt when it's cold. Amen. But I'm thankful to God. Amen. For whatever situation it is, man, he is so good. So we would ask you, we invite the visitation of the Holy Spirit into this place this morning. We invite you to go along with us as we uplift the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and honor our pastor and his wife for his many years of service. Amen. To Amen. our congregation. Amen. We'll give you into the hand of our music ministry. They will bless us in song, and then we will come back with a, a scripture and a prayer, and we will hear a word from God from one of, one, one of our own, amen, amen. Reverend Dr. Joy Washington, amen. amen. We're excited, amen, about what God is about to do, amen, amen. God bless you.
good morning. It's a wonderful day, isn't it? I was, uh, I'm going to be reading a scripture from uh, the 119 Psalms, and it's perhaps, if not the longest, very close to it. It has 170 verses, but we're not going to do that. Amen. But I, <laughs> except for rail back then, I'd be willing to do that. But I want to say this. It's if you open up the word, yeah. it will open you up. All right. And I like, I like the way Reverend Johnson said it yeah. one last Sunday. He said, uh, he used the word resonate. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something about scripture, if, if it resonates with you, it does something to you. You, you can't hold it back. All right, now. So I'm going to read some words, and I hope that you will well, take it in. Yeah. All right. Beginning with the first verse, we're only going to read about 10 verses. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his testimonies that seek him with their whole heart. Not all, not part, but all of it. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep the precepts diligently. Yeah. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Mm. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. All right. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Yeah. With thy whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. All right. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom, the power and the glory. Gracious Master, we come to you again, Lord, thanking you for another day. Yet another day that was not promised to us, but yet, God, you found fit that we remain here in this humanistic realm in the land of the living. You didn't have us make that transition today. And God, we're grateful for it. But God, we know that to be in this realm simply means that we're not with you blessed in another place. And that means that you have more work for us to do. So God, we ask that you make the, our mission clear. Yeah. Write it plain on the wall that we can understand it. But yet God, give us the desire yeah. and the will to follow whatever your instructions are. You said the path of the righteous man is ordered. Yeah. And so God, order our steps. Clear our minds that it be no ambiguity about what you want us to do and how you want us to do it. Wow. Even though if we don't see where, when, and how, yeah. give us strength to continue to walk. God, we understand that there is arrows and fires and snares and potholes and upheavals along the way. But keep our legs moving. Keep our hearts and our eyes fixated on you. Because God, we know there's no other place than to be with you and that is our mission to get back where you are so God we ask that you cleanse our heart and our minds and, and, and make our cricket way straight that we we're not asking for for there not to be any obstacles 
we just asking God give us the the spirit and the foresight to go over through or around whichever you ask us to do so God we we pray for each and every one be it near or far in the uttermost parts of the world in the jungles of the Philippines or sent somewhere in China wherever they may be God we ask that you make their mission clear and so God we we thank you today especially for today not that any other day is more special than this one but this is a special one for St. Matthew thank you for our pastor over 42 years his wife serving with him 42 years and God you have made it very clear that longevity has its place here and we thank you for the growth that we, the parishioners, have received. We thank you for the growth and the kindness that they have shown towards us. And God, we pray that we have shown them the love that as much as they have shown us and you have shown us. And so God, we just want to simply ask that you keep our feet moving. Keep this church moving upward. Keep our minds moving upward. And we'll be careful to give you all honor and praise. Now for the sick and shut in, the bereaved families, we ask that you look in upon them. God, we ask that you go to the highways and the hedges and the, and the jail cells, those who may be struggling with their decisions, the consequences of their decisions. Let them know that you are still with them there. And for God, those of us who here seem that time has no bounds, let us understand that time is winding up. So God, we just want to thank you. thank you we love you we adore you and we god we just love you and we thank you for making things as easy as they are in our lives well, even if we feel that they are complex things could be worse and we thank you for making them easy now god we ask that you bless this man of god as he come and break the bread of life with us yeah. give him strength give him clarity of thought give him the spirit from on high that he is moved out of the way, that your spirit is seen coming through him and that, his, that the word that you deliver through his mouth reaches fertile soil. So God, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we his people, we say all in his name, amen. 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 As the choir prepares to, to bless us again with song, I just want to let you know that uh, while we're doing that, the ushers will direct us, those that might have gifts. There's a basket on the table here. They will direct if you, as the choir will sing, you can come around and place your gifts in the basket. I do have one announcement that we were given from our own sister Charlene Britton that she will have a book signing on Sunday, September the 18th from 1 to 2 p.m. at St. Matthew here in the Fellowship Hall. Amen. And it says that if you can't make it, the book signing, you can order off from Amazon or from Barnes and Nobles. And thank you for all of your support. Amen. 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 We ought to give our support to one of our own. Amen. So we're going to ask that the choir sings. Ushers, if you would, help us as we uh, direct uh, the congregation around again basket here uh, where you will place your gifts. Amen. Amen.
round goes high and high. Amen. amen, amen. So we're ready to go up just a little bit high. Amen. 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 It is indeed my honor, my pleasure, my privilege. Amen. To introduce to some and and and, and present to others uh, none other than uh, Reverend Dr. Joy Washington. Amen. One of our own. Amen. We're so grateful. Amen. To have him with us, he and his family here with us this morning, I asked him to, to send me something that I could properly introduce him with. And, and, and when I read what he sent, it dawned on me that it doesn't take long to introduce a righteous man. Amen. Hey, 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 man, he, he, what he gave, he said that he started off, he said, uh, he's, he's one that loved the Lord with all of my heart. Not perfect, just present. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's a member of the Greater Pure Light Baptist Church. He's the principal of the Westlake Middle School and, and the Humble ISD. And he said, just ready to do God's will. Amen. 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 What, else do you, what else do you say? Amen. He is a, he is a father, a husband. Yeah. He is a man of God. Amen. He's a friend. He's an humble man, a very knowledgeable, educated man, but a very humble man. Amen. Amen. And I, I count it all joy to call him my friend. Amen. We are, we are wonderful. So let me ask you, if you would stand on your feet. Amen. As we receive this awesome man of God. Amen. As he come to us in his own way, whatever God has given to him. Amen. Prepare your hearts that you might receive. You may be seated. It is a blessing to be here in the house of God one more time. Um, it's not because of me, but it's all because of God. So I am grateful for this opportunity here to celebrate these honorees who have watched me grow and develop and what a huge impact this church has made on our lives. So we are just grateful to be here. We are glad to be here. There are so many other places we could have been, but because of God. We are here today. So I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for just the love and the care that has been shown to my family uh, as we arrived, even up until this very moment. <laughs> uh, literally within the past 15 minutes, how much uh, St. Matthew cares about us and we care about you. So we do, we love and appreciate you today. And, I, and I'm here to impart a word to you. I was sent on a divine assignment, so I want to make sure I uh, keep my assignment. Uh, it's important that I keep my assignment. But if you have your Bibles, if you would stand with me. And I promise if you encourage and you say amen, I'll be sitting down pretty quickly. <laughs> I promise you. Um, Exodus, Exodus 14, verses 10 through 14. God has a word here for us right now. Uh, with what we're going through, with what we're dealing with, there is a word within this text. All right. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If you got it, say, I got it. Yeah. All right. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Forever the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Turn to your neighbor and just say 911. 911 is what we're going to talk about really briefly. Uh, 
Thank you. You may be seated. 911, there's an emergency, there's a distress going on, and I need some help. Throughout life, we often hear or read of impossible tasks or stories involving ordinary people who face an impossible task that requires divine intervention. Illustrations and stories that involve impossible tasks are intriguing, extraordinary, and often require more than just our brains, muscles, or bravery. Uh, Charles Spurgeon said, we are but men, frail, feeble, and apt to faint. When God wants to do an impossible task, he often first has to break men down before he can use you. Throughout the Bible, we have situations where God has helped individuals accomplish magnificent victories, glorious triumphs, and extraordinary endeavors. Today, you may be here facing what you feel is an insurmountable mountain, a hopeless situation. Uh, you might feel overwhelmed and that no one understands, but I came by to tell you, you have a father who understands and he knows all. 9-1-1. God has just, had just delivered the children of Israel from the Egyptian bondage. He set them free from the oppression of Pharaoh. The children of Israel were delivered from captivity and slavery. And then finally, they were going to be in the land of promise. Here's what we have to understand sometimes. Even in our route to our promise, there may be an obstacle that we have to overcome. Uh, you've heard this said before, life is not a bowl of cherries. Uh, every now and then as believers, we have to be tested and tried so that we can be stronger. Our faith can be stronger. So maybe the Israelites thought this was going to be an easy walk. But I came by to tell St. Matthew, no, it's not always easy. Uh, so God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the yeah. children of Israel, they went out in orderly ranks. Uh, as they moved out, the presence of God was with them. Yeah. Let me put a pin there and encourage you one more time. When you launch out on that new plan, on that new destiny, you're not going by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't think you stepped out on your own and you can do it by yourself. You've got to have God in order for that plan to come to pass. Ask me, how do, how do you know when you decide to get married, you got to have God when you get ready to step out on that marriage. When you get that new promotion, you can't do that promotion by yourself. you got to have God with you as you're going through that new promotion. You get some news at the doctor's office and you say, oh, I can't do this by myself. God, I need you to help me. I need you to heal me. I need you to deliver me. So when you launch out, you're never to launch out by yourself. But after they left Egypt, Pharaoh began to have second thoughts. Oh, gosh, it's something us about us and those second thoughts. You know, God told us to do it, but by the time we get down to the corner, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, we, we have those second thoughts that come up. God didn't already told you you're healed, but, but what if? But what maybe? That's kind of how we operate. So Pharaoh was having a second thought. He said, wait a minute. I let all my, my, in my power, my, my servants go. I'm having a second thought. Um, but as they moved out of Egypt, remember the presence of God was still with them. And God was with them. They were not by themselves. Watch this. He gave him a shade of heat of the desert sun and a light at darkness at night. Yeah. However, Pharaoh began to have second thoughts. Yeah. Point number one, not everyone, and this might be news for St. Matthew, and y'all might not ask me back, but not everybody wants to see you prosper. Yeah. Uh, let, let me break it down how the young people said there are some haters out there. They don't like it, Reverend Johnson, that you didn't retire and you able to go where you want to go and do what you want. They don't like it. There's some people that don't like it, Pastor, how you prospered. All they don't like it. They're haters. They're haters. They're haters. And they don't want to see you prosper. I, uh, but, but it appears sometimes that the enemy has wiped you off. He's graced you. He's, he's, he's got you defeated. But guess what? You are more than a conqueror. 
You are more than a conqueror. But here's what I want you to realize. What, what happens as to why we let the haters overtake how we think is because we have now taken our mind off of Christ. We're focused on them and not him. Let me say that again. We're focused on them and not him. We're focused on them and not him. So tell your neighbor, don't be a Peter. Lean over to him and tell him, don't be a Peter. Don't be a Peter. Don't, don't, don't. You remember Peter got out there on that water. He was brave in faith, but something happened when he got on that water, when he took his focus off Christ. Don't let the enemy take your focus. 911, 911. Verse 10 says they were so afraid. They cried out to the Lord. They were terrified. They were scared. And they said to Moses, were there not enough graves <laughs> in Egypt that you take us out into the wilderness to die? Why would you make me change jobs, God, and the other one was just fine the way I had it? Why do I need to move into another neighborhood and it was fine where I live? Why did I have to go to this doctor when the other doctor I loved in the best? Sometimes he's got to move you to prove you. He's got to move you out of what's familiar to something that's unfamiliar. And then he starts to test that faith of yours. And see how strong you are. See how good those legs are. How good those arms are when it's time to really fight the enemy. But those Egyptians said, don't take us out of here. That was comfortable. That was familiar. That was safe. Only for us to get out here and die. They were afraid. They're out here in the wilderness. And they had lost focus. Why do you say that, preacher? They had lost focus because they had forgotten all the things that God had already done. And sometimes we have to take a personal inventory and say, wait a minute, God, you woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. You clothed me. Sometimes we got to take a personal inventory so I can still wave my hands. I still got a voice to talk. I got a mind. I got my children all right. Sometimes we got to take a personal inventory. They were discouraged. They were giving up on God. They were ready to die fleeing when the promised land was so close. Don't give up before you get to your promise. Don't throw in the towel just yet. Keep holding on as a brighter day ahead. Don't give up yet. They began to question Moses. They even were saying, hey, wouldn't it just have been better off where we were? Let me tell you my second point. Your current situation is not your final destination. Your current situation is not your permanent destination. Uh, I, we were traveling this summer, and we went to the airport, and it was the first time all both kids got to fly. And one of the things you learn, and you're in the airport, and there's arrivals, and there's departures. And you have to realize there is a gap of time that takes place between you departing and a time for you to arrive. So what I'm telling you is because I was in IAH did not mean I wasn't going to get to the Birmingham airport. So just because I'm sitting where I am right now does not mean my promise is not coming. Oh, y'all come on and praise it. Just because I'm standing in this situation, this obstacle, it don't mean I'm going to be there forever. It just doesn't mean it. It may look dark. It may look grim. It may, I may look like I'm without, but I serve a God. Who's more than able? Who's, who's better than able? Who can rock me when times get tough? Who can comfort me when I don't feel good? I serve a mighty good God. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't let my current station a situation become my permanent destination. The children of Israel were in a serious situation. They did not know what to do. The children of Israel had done everything God had asked them to do. They had followed his directions, but they were caught between a powerful army and an impassable sea. There seemed to be no way to escape. They got an army behind them. They have the Red Sea in front of them. 
uh, the children of Israel, some of them fell to their knees and started praying, but others cried out to Moses and said, what do you want us to do? God often brings us to impossible situations so we'll go down on our knees. I believe, Pastor, and I, I, this is just my thought, the problems we're dealing with as a nation and as a country is because we stopped going down on our knees. Yeah, we, it, it, there's some power in going down on your knees. It is a posture that God can speak to you. It is a posture that God can deliver you. Sometimes, St. Matthew, you got to go down. Wait a minute, Joy, back that up. Every time you're faced with an obstacle, every time you are faced with a challenge, every time you are faced with a difficulty, these knees need to be wore out. These knees, these knees need to be wore out. What do your knees look like? Look down at your knees. What do your knees, what do your knees look like? Have you looked at them lately? What does your knees look like? Have they been, have they been through the trial and been through the fire? Have they been through some rough times and some tough times? Hey, I had to go down on my knees. Because when I go down on my knees, God can use me. God can speak to me. He humbles me while I'm down on my knees. Tell him you need some knee time. You need some knee time. You need some knee time. Let me say, I didn't say me time. I said knee time. You need some knee time. Some knee time. Got to get down on those knees. Got to get down on those knees. Jonah 2 and 9 says, but I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay all that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. These Israelites, their redemption was drawing now, and the the Lord was the only one that could save them. There was no on foot. There was no weapons. There was no training. I'm caught again between the army that's behind me and the Red Sea in front of me. Psalm 37 and 39 says, but the salvation of the righteous is the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. 911, 911. Point three, stand still and let God do the moving. I I, want to put it like this, Pastor. I'm I'm afraid also as we're not spending knee time, we're also doing too much movement. We, we're moving more than we're standing still, and we're wondering why we can't get the answer we need from God. Yeah. Tell them you're moving too much. You're moving too much. When I, when I was a kid, that used to bother my mom, especially when we was in church. Yeah. Let me, where my mother's at. You don't get to moving. You, when you get in church, you sit down. Because the Holy Spirit is moving, so I don't want you doing a whole lot of moving. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah mom didn't play that. You, 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 now, y'all know what she said. You sit yourself down. You're not doing all that. No, no, no. You're not doing that. My wife is that way about hours. Uh Uh-uh, they get to moving too much. Wait a minute, you need to get them. They got to sit down. I'm like, okay, I think I got it. I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to get both of them wrangled together. But we're we're moving so much as Christians, we're not standing still and watching God work out that situation. We'll try to handle it. We put it down. We pick it back up. We give it to somebody else. We go meet with our girlfriend. What you think? Well, I think you should do this. And then the next thing you know, the whole situation is back in a bigger mess. You got to stand still and know that I am God. I'm sure over these years, Pastor, there's been times where you had to, didn't know, do I go to the left? Do I go to the right? But you made a declaration, I'm going to stand still, and I'm going to let God fight my battle. Uh, Moses begins to tell the people, look, God is working on your behalf. He's fighting your battle. God can handle your battle. Nothing is too hard for God. Anybody remember Sarah? Sarah got to laughing and she thought, wait a minute, it's no way in my old age <laughs> that I could give birth to a child. But is there anything? Y'all going to mess up and make me shout in here. Is there anything too hard for God? He 
say, watch me take you from where you are to somewhere you never thought. Is there anything too hard? Yeah, Moses had to re remind them that, yes, I see the pharaohs behind us. Yes, I know the Red Sea is in front of you, but guess what? I'm going to have to go consult with Daddy. Daddy say, Moses, you got what you need. It's right there in your hand. Yeah. Sometimes we have it right in our hands and we let it go. Yeah. He says, stretch out the rod you got and watch me make a highway in the middle of this Red Sea. If we stand still, God will. I don't know why I'm rhyming so much today, Pastor. But if we stand still, God will. If you stand still, God will. Let me see if I can get some help. I want this side to say, if you stand still, they got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got, got, got it. If you just stand still, God will take care of the situation. If, if you are sitting here this morning, and you are facing a difficult situation. <laughs> you are there for a purpose. Remember we said life is not a bowl of cherries. Every day you're not going to be on top of the mountain. Every day you, the money is not going to flow like it always did. But you're there for a reason and you're there for a purpose. Can I say it like this? God knows you're in a tight spot. God knows you're in a tight spot. He ain't forgot where you are. He, he's not lost on who you are. He knows you're in a tight spot. So let me do this 911. 911, and it has nothing to do with 911. This is 911. This is an emergency call we got to make. If you remember, 911 was brought on the scene to be a line, a phone line that made it really simple when you needed to call and get emergency services. Uh, that's a police, that's an ambulance, that could be any of those emergency services. Um, and they wanted to be very simple so it would just roll on off your tongue. You'd know how to use it. And do you know to this day there are still some countries that do not have access to that 911 service. So just like the Israelites were caught in a tight spot, they had to do a 911 call. Let that sit there for a little bit. Because, you know, I have to, I have to bring it home. Because St. Matthew has high expectations for Joy Washington. <laughs> so Pharaoh is behind them. The Red Sea is in front of them. They had to make a 911 call. I need help right now in this situation that I'm in. Uh, I, I, I'm stuck. I, I don't know which way to turn. I don't know what to do. I need some immediate help. So who you gonna call when you're stuck, Reverend? I'm glad y'all asked. I'm gonna call on the one who died on Calvary, who who took the nails for me. I, I'm, I'm gonna make a 911 call because I need him to rescue me. I need him to save me. I need him to deliver me. Well. Well, well, that's not the only emergency I found in the Bible. There was a woman who wrestled for 12 years with an issue of blood. She tried every doctor. She went here and she went there. But one day she decided to make a 911 call. And she hurried and got to the hem of his garment. Come on, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were down, trapped in a fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar said, mm, I don't know if they're going to make it out of there. But while they were in the furnace, they had to make a 911 call. I need Jesus to come and help me in this situation. I believe I remember another woman by the name of Rahab. 
there were some spies in the city and Rahab was brave enough. Rahab was bold enough to say, you can come on and stay with me. When the men came in that night, she said, no, no one's been here with me. She had to make a 911 call for her and she made a 911 call for her family. Have you been through anything this year that required a 911? Say, I need him right now. I need help right now. I need deliverance right now. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 911. I'm okay because I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. But God delivered me. He set me free. Let me see you wave your hands. Wave those hands. Yeah. Yeah. He'll part your Red Sea. He'll part your Red Sea. He'll deliver you. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. I've been through too much. I've experienced too much. I know that I've had to make a few 911 calls. He saved me. He delivered me. He brought me safely. Can't nobody do it like he can. Can't nobody do it like he can. Yes. And then over 2,000 years ago, his son died. He laid there all day Friday night. He laid there all day Saturday night. But early, but early, but early, but early, Sunday morning, he got up, he got up. How do you know he got up? He got up in me, my feet got light, my hands got light, my mouth opened up. He lives, 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 he lives. Hey, I came to tell you, it's not over till God says it's over. I don't care what the enemy tried to do. 911 Jesus takes care of it all. God bless you with all power. God bless you in all might. God bless you coming in. God bless you coming out. Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody like him.
Amen, 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 amen. 911. Amen. You can always call. Amen. Whenever you need anything. Amen. Our Lord always stands ready. Amen, amen. Uh, Reverend, God bless your heart. We, we, we are blessed by the fact that you were uh, willing to allow God to use you in such a mighty way. We're blessed. Amen. On this day. Amen. Hey, hey, amen. And so we, we give God all the praise, all the glory. Amen. So after a word like that, amen, if there's somebody here that has not yet accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, amen, here is your opportunity. Amen. Even if you did maybe and maybe you strayed away, here's your opportunity. Amen. To renew your subscription. Amen. To heaven. Amen. Hey, amen. As the choir sings, amen. We're going to extend the invitation. Amen. We don't, don't open the doors. They've been opened, but we're going to extend an invitation. Amen. If you realize that you need the Lord in your life, here's an opportunity. Amen. Amen. He stands ready to receive. Amen. All we need to do is ask.
that sometimes we need to be still because the characteristic of the Holy Spirit is that the Spirit moves from place to place. Amen. That's what I like about it. I don't have to try to find it because he, he knows where I am all the time. Amen. Amen. Never would have made it. Amen. Without the Lord on my side. Amen. I just, just give us about another 30 seconds of that and let me, let me ask you to just make your own reflection to think about what it took for you to be where you are right now. I know we, we, we education, we've got training, we've done all kinds of things, but without God, all of that would be nothing. Amen. Amen. Never would have made it without God on my side. Amen. 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 We thank God. Amen. For all that has been done and said here on this day. Amen. We thank God for using Reverend Washington and we thank God for him opening up himself to allow God to speak to us through him. Amen. We're grateful to God. Amen. We thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 I think now would be the appropriate time. Amen. For our pastor. Amen. If he would have a word to come forth and We'll give it over into the hands of our pastor, Dr. Mofa. I'm kind of like the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Why you do me like that? 
then make me stand up to talk. God is so good. I'm looking in your faces, and I know God is good. He's brought us through some things we never thought we'd have to deal with. Dropped some things in our midst that we didn't even know the name of. But God has kept us. He's still blessing us. And we're wiser. We're better. We're stronger. <laughs> when I look back over my life, and I see all the things that he's done for me. Hallelujah. Deacon, the devil thought he had you. But look at you. What a mighty God we serve. Been through some storms and some rain. But God is good. I feel like shouting just looking out seeing your faces. Because the Lord does not intend for us to be so fearful till we're scared to worship him. If there ever was a time when we need the Lord, Son says we sure do need him now. Thank you so much, God, for leaving me here 42 years. Nobody but God. I said nobody but God. Amen. The devil tried to get you. He tried to get me. He tried to get so many of you. But two years later, here we are. And it wasn't COVID that had us down. But nothing is too hard for God. Amen. I, I, I looked at my brother making his way to this choir stand. So many of us have no issue. Lord have mercy. Amen. None. Just blessed, blessed, blessed. We won't sing for God. Deacon, your 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 rank, your place is showing. If you'll make your way to your row holding on to the wall, we can make it through another day holding on to Jesus. He's a mighty God, and he's worthy of all praise. Nine. <laughs> one, one. I can't go forward. Can't go back. Mountains over here, mountains over there. Please, Lord, come see about me. The Lord made a highway through the middle of the Red Sea. And he didn't even leave it muddy. They went through on dry ground. Our God is so good to us if we just praise him for a little of what he does. We'd wear ourselves out. We will wear ourselves Amen. out. Amen. Thank God for you doing this today. I'm satisfied with what God has given us. Amen. 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 My baby couldn't talk this morning. I mean, couldn't talk. She said, I don't have a I got a little experience with not having a voice. <laughs> God has shown me some things. Amen. I don't have it all the time, but when I gave it to her, I believed he'd do the same thing for her that he does for me. 
when I see her singing until she shouts. Hmm. Come on, children, let's go this way. The way the Lord is leading us. Let's be the example that nothing is too hard for God. Let's be the example that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. God is with us. Deacon, he's brought us this far. And he'll carry us on. We're not going to bite and devour each other. We're going to love and hold on to each other. Amen. 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 Thank God for Reverend Joey, Reverend Dr. Joey of Washington. Sometimes I just want to get close to him so I'll, I'll catch on fire. Amen. <laughs> All you got to do is give him a Bible in a couple of minutes. Amen. <laughs> He'll just catch on fire. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Him to take this time and for all of you to take this morning and for him to bring his lovely wife and those two beautiful babies. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To come and see by <laughs> us today. Yeah. We're better than blessed. Amen. Thank you all. We love you. Yeah. Not much I can say. I don't, I, can you talk now? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Encourage yourself. Yeah. And yeah. Whatever you need to do, encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Amen. So I love you and I thank you and God bless you and thank y'all for this lovely day that we have had in this program so far. And thank you to Reverend for the word. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to invite you to talk and not let you talk. Amen. I'm not going to invite you to talk and not let you talk. Amen. 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 Right. Somebody wrote a song that said we're in this thing together. Amen. I don't know who it was. I don't know what the intent was. But it's good for the church. Amen. We are in this thing together. God bless you. Thank all of you. Amen. Choir, thank you all so much. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. You don't have to say nothing. You just do what you do. Amen. All right. Amen. She said, at this time, I'll give you back your hands of Reverend yes, Johnson. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Love you. Amen. 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 We're going to bring uh, Reverend Washington up to give us our benediction. But let me ask St. Matthew that after that, we're going we're gonna to give our benediction, so we're going to sign off the air. Amen. But we still got business. Amen. That we need to take care of. So I'm going to ask you that after that, if you would just remain in your seat, our deacons have some. 
presentations or whatever. So let me uh, bring back to us our guest for today, and he will give us our last word and our benediction. God bless you again. Uh, hopefully you were blessed today. I know I was. It's a blessing to be here, <clears throat> but to uh, be here and, and be in spirit, but also be here physically. Uh, so we, we check in every once in a while. We send some messages back and forth. When it have been a minute, I said, let me check in. Let me find out what's going on down there in College Station. So it's good to see you. Gwen, good to see you. Uh, everybody that's here. My wife, most of you know, but if you'll wave your hand so there may be some new folks that don't know you. And, <laughs> and then our two. Now, when I was here last time, he was on the way. Now he's in the way. <laughs> Let me tell you, I learned a difference. Girls are different. Boys are different than girls. I'm learning that one. <laughs> but Josiah and John Elise are here. John Elise is five and Josiah is two. So uh, we are rocking and rolling. Now he's laughing, okay. <laughs> but I, I, will, I do appreciate this time. You, you just don't know how much love is in my heart for this church. Uh, and I quickly tell anybody in Houston when they ask me, well, where did you go to? Oh, you want me to tell you? I can tell you. And I can tell you what, the address, and I can tell you how to get there. Uh, absolutely. But I do thank you for this opportunity. And I, again, pray that the word of God that you know no matter what situation you're in, with the Pharaoh behind you, with the Red Sea in front of you, that you can make a 911 call right where you are. And God will come to your rescue. Let us pray for, I'll pray over you as we do our dismissal and then stay for the next things. Dear God, we just thank you for your people. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this time. God, you are good. And your mercy endured forever. Can't nobody keep us like you can. Can't nobody hold us like you can. Can't nobody bless us like you can. But God, we ask that you touch each and every individual in this house today. God, that they leave this place carrying that light bright. That others will see and say, what is it? What's different? What, what, what is it about them? It's the love of Christ. God, we pray over these honorees right now, God. We ask you to continue to strengthen them. Wrap them with wisdom and knowledge, God. Fix them wherever they may be broken, God. Strengthen them wherever they might be weak, God. Feed them where they may be malnourished. God, we know that you are the author and finisher of our faith. So, God, we thank you today. God, we go from this place, but we never go from your presence. You lead, guide, and guard us. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.